Thank you, Julie Andrews. The music from The Sound of Music is a favorite of our guest who's joining us live on the phone. Um, thank you so much for being here. Nancy Goodman, you are... Thank you for having me. Yeah, you are an award-winning... Um, should I call you an Well, you just wrote the film, Surprise Me, which is an amazing thing. You wrote it, you directed it, you've never even done this before. And, no. Right? It's going to be screened. This is a big deal. Everybody listen here. <laughs> at the Downtown L.A. Film Festival on October 17th at the Regal L.A. Live Theater at 9 p.m. for a girl who's never done a film before. That's a large feat. So congratulations. Thank you. Now, why did you do this film? Because you're not a filmmaker by trade, right? No, I'm certainly not. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, how you did this film surprise me and what is it about it is about a surprise party planner who hates surprises and there are three men in her life um she plays it very safe and there's one particular relationship that kind of kind of rocks her or you know breaks her safety net and meanwhile she's hired by a hollywood producer to throw a surprise wedding for his girlfriend and so she's got to get the bride down the aisle without knowing she's the bride but the subplot is why I did the film, and that is about emotional eating and binging and where it comes in in our relationship, in, in our relationships, in our days, in our moments, why, what it means, what it's trying to tell us, and how we need to listen because there's a voice inside, and when we don't listen to it, then eating and food come and play havoc on us. Okay, so, hang on. Let me stop you for a minute. There's always okay. a voice inside of me saying, Deborah, don't go for it. But I just, there's another voice inside of me that says, too bad, I'm headed for the refrigerator. So what do you do in a case like that where there's two voices going on inside and the one that's stubborn is the one that keeps winning out? And I'm sure I speak <laughs> you, for a lot of people. Yeah, you mediate. <laughs> you mediate. You mediate between the two voices and you, you, be, you become the moderator of them because you're the one who takes responsibility listening to both sides and deciding which one you're which which one you're going to listen to right now and which one you're going to say this is not the healthy voice right now this is the um you know instant gratification voice but it's not coming from a place that's healthy or responsible. I'm going to play devil's advocate just a little okay. bit because and I know I'm speaking for millions and millions of women. Even yeah. though you know it's not healthy, even though you know you shouldn't, even though you know it's the worst thing in the world and you're going to wake up in the morning and be mad at yourself, still most people, that's why people are overweight. You know, they're doing it anyway. They're binging. It makes them feel better. I mean, there is something to comfort food, i got to tell you. How do you get over that? Um, so, there's a, so there's a couple things. One is I believe it is healthy to sometimes make the choice not to eat healthfully. To, to let yourself enjoy, you know, a donut or, or a couple donuts. Or if it's a really bad day, maybe you're going to eat five donuts, you know. I, I've been known to, to exceed that, but, but it's well, a at least make them, decision. At least make them I'm a little making. munchkins, but go ahead. <laughs> the munchkins are good, yeah. Yeah, you skim over the different flavors. But, but, but really, the more that we say no to ourselves, the more we're going to want it. So a lot of times it's saying yes. And we are not familiar with that concept of saying yes to food that we think we're not supposed to have. And what ends up happening is that we eat more because it's forbidden and, and we want it. And honestly, why shouldn't we have it? You can, you can eat unhealthy food and be at a low weight. You can eat all healthy food and be overweight. It is not about the food. And we put so much focus on it and we are not looking at what's going on in that moment outside of that decision because that those two voices that are saying I want it I don't want it have it don't have it it's very possible that there's a plan coming up or somebody just made a comment or there's something coming up that you don't want to do or you're anxious or whatever and so that conversation is a decoy it's a distraction from feelings and if you look at the feelings the food's going to go away those cravings are often just a spin of feelings and anxiety that you're not looking at. And so your mind goes to food because it is comforting. Food does comfort us. It does. There's but no there doubt about it. But there may be a comfortable it. choice to make instead. It's interesting. Um, 
my assistant is here in the room, and she was just saying before we went on the air, I'm really hungry. And I think subconsciously it's stuck in my head, and I grabbed for my little protein bar. I swear to God. And just as we're calling you, knowing what I'm going to be talking about, I'm eating my little protein bar. And then I suddenly felt guilty, and I thought, uh-oh, I shouldn't be doing that. And, and then and I said to myself, terrible? yes. And then I said, why it's are you doing this? It's terrible that you feel guilty. I mean, you're probably hungry. No, I'm not. It, she was hungry, but by default, I decided to eat the protein bar. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I was my point yeah. is... I wasn't even thinking about it. I just grabbed for it. And the truth is, right. she was hungry and I wasn't. Yeah. So that's where you have to stop and Kayla. say, <laughs> is this a time to eat? Or is this a time that, you know, that's not, you, you know, reach? I, I can have the protein bar if I want it. But am I really hungry? You know, it's like when we tell kids, you can watch TV, but you can't watch TV all day long. We can eat. We just can't eat all day long. We can't have everything we want. We're not a, that, that's not being an adult. It's not being responsible. But to tell ourselves that we can't have it at all is setting ourselves up to overeat and obsess and binge because we have to have it. We should have it. I have to have it. I mean, I'm, not, I'm done depriving myself. I, if I want cookies for lunch, I have cookies for lunch, but and not, then I'll go light at dinner. You know? Right, not the entire box of Oreos, which so many people do. Okay, so how did you get into this situation where you ended up an emotional eating coach, where you did this film, and you also wrote a book, I'd like to say. Let's step back a little bit and talk about your entire journey with food. Okay, I do want to just make one comment about that whole thing of Oreos, because we all think that if we have one, we have to eat all of them. And I used to be that girl. And the reason I'm not anymore is because... I know I can have them every day if I want. That's if I true. want to have Oreos every day, they're not so big. You know, it's like that guy in high school, like you had to have them, had to have them, and then you got them. It's like, eh, he's not, not so, so great. great. You know, if, if you can have them, <laughs> they, they, be, they become real and normal and not so celebrated. Well, the so, Oreos anyway. are pretty great, probably better than that guy they're in high great. school. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's circle back a little bit to your entire journey okay. with food and what got you here. So when I was in high school, I was always, you know, I was bigger. I, was, I wasn't very heavy, but I was, you know, I was probably 10, 15 pounds overweight. And I always, you know, I was always dieting and, and then I would blow it. But then in college, I started to binge. And in my early adulthood, I was binging. I wasn't bulimic. I wasn't anorexic. So I didn't ever think I had an eating disorder. I just thought I called it a food curse. You know, like, why do I have this problem and other people can eat so normally? Hang on. What is a binge? Let's back up. What, a, what is a binge? A binge is just massive amounts of food in a short period of time. So overeating and, you know, just being stuffed is not a binge. A binge is where it's, it's crazed, it's frantic, it's it's just stuffing food, whatever it is. I mean, the day that I decided to make a call was because I, my kids were little at the time. They're in the back seat. I saw this piece of bagel in the back seat of the car, Ooh. and I ate it. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Oh, I can't even that. confidently say it was from that same day. <laughs> Honey, I have done <laughs> I mean, that. I still before. do that. Sometimes I still do that. I am so sorry to say. I mean, but everyone yeah, has. Yeah, it's disgusting. So you but felt... isn't it better if we all say that, we, that we've done it and take the shame out of it? Because it's, if, if we're all doing it, then it's actually normal behavior. It's abnormal not to do it, maybe. But I think what we have to do is use it. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift if you look at it this way, because once I went to therapy, I was able to, it took, a, it took a long time to learn it, but I was able to identify all of my feelings because the food led me to them. Like I can give you an example. Saturday night, let's say I'm obsessed because, you know, I, I want to be thin for Saturday night because we're going out with all these couples and what am I going to eat and how am I going to diet and how am I going to get those few pounds off, you know, boo, 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 boo. And so my therapist said to me, who are, who are these people you're going out with Saturday night? And I said, oh, it's these, these couples we go out with. And he, she said, well, do you even like them? And I stopped and I thought, yeah, come to think of it, I really don't like them. I don't even know why we go out with them. They're pretentious or this and that. And so <laughs> I was able to now start to understand that if I'm obsessing, it's because there is a feeling behind it. There's a, an opinion or there's maybe I'm going against my, my core. And so... The food is like a flashlight if you use it that way, and it's shining 
it's, it's pointing you to a direction that you need to take a look at. Something is going on because it is not about food. Because if, we, if it was, we would be doing this every minute of the day, and we're not. Yeah, I mean... There's sometimes we're eating more, sometimes we're not. So often food is like an all-purpose thing that walks around with you all day. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if yeah, the phone does. rings... Look, I'll give you me as an example. I can't give anybody else. If the phone rings... For whatever reason, I find myself at the refrigerator after I pick up the phone. And I'm thinking, Deborah, why are you doing this? So then I'll try and walk away. You watching a TV program or whatever, you grab something to eat. And I do know the you're not supposed to do that. You gotta sit at the table and eat. You shouldn't stand up, you know, don't talk on the phone. But these are habits that are tough to break. I mean, you had a good therapist. But you had a good therapist. And I do that too. I yeah. do that too. I I mean there's certain I will tell you there are certain people I've talked to on the phone. And I know I'm going to eat while I talk to them because I, 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 talking on the phone is a little boring, to be honest. I think, I think we, we go to the food because it's entertaining. And we're always wanting to do something with our hands. We, we human beings have a very hard time sitting still. That's true. And we have a very hard time talking with people without food. If you think about it, we're always getting, our social plans are always made around food. It is true. In fact, you know what, and then my friends will make dinner plans and, it's always late, too, and I don't like to eat yeah. late. I'm like, I'd rather just go with the Bluebird special with the old people. But, you know, everybody's Me always... Me, too. Right? You know, I want to eat at 5 o'clock or 6, maybe. That's when I'm hungry. Right? I do not want to eat at 9 or 10 at night or 8. And I'm thinking, really? Because then it's going to sit with me all night, and then I say, okay, right. I'll eat something before I go, so I won't eat as much at 9 o'clock. But, of course, everybody's got food all over the place, and um, it's very, very difficult. I'm with you. Social events are around food. You know, weddings, funerals, everything. Yeah, yeah. So and 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 so those are those are decisions that you're allowed to to make. Like for example, I started telling people sometimes, you know, I prefer to eat early. So either, like a farmer, I could I'm starving at four o'clock. If I've eaten lunch at noon, by the mid afternoon, I'm hungry. Me and too. I, I want my dinner. I eat. Mm-hmm. I eat something substantial. Maybe it's a bagel or maybe it is a protein bar with fruit or something like that. But I, to go more than three or four hours without eating, I'm very hungry. So, so that's when I'll eat. And then I'm eating less at dinner. So if I have plans to go out, I'm not as hungry. You can't enter into a meal starving or a party because you'll, you know, first of all, you'll binge when you get home because you're not going to binge at the party. You'll binge when you get home afterwards, you know. And so... It's structuring meals and snacks and making sure that you're not so hungry because part of the reason you're thinking about food so much is that you're trying not to eat it. When you eat it, you don't have to think about it so much. You're satisfied. You it's know, it so helps. important to be satisfied. It helps if you can cook and if you're a decent cook because then you can plan mm-hmm. ahead. Um, I'm right. not the greatest cook, and I, honestly, I'm not proud of that fact. I'm not because very <laughs> often I get a little confused in the kitchen, and I'm trying to figure out what ingredients to put in and not burn something. And it stresses right. me out a little bit, I have to tell you. And I come from a family of phenomenal cooks. Um, yeah. That's another thing, I think, right? If you can, at least cook it yourself. If you can, it's, you know, I mean, you're gonna, you're, you know what's in it. You, you know, you can make a lot of, I mean, I think it's a, it's a good idea to have food in the fridge. Like, I'll usually have chicken in there and, you know, salad stuff and fruit and just stuff on hand, um, turkey, things like that. And then if I want something out, then, you know, then I can grab that. And I do try to eat healthfully. But when I want pizza, I have pizza and I have deep dish and I have Ooh. big pieces of it. Because if I try not to have it, I'm just going to go binge on or overeat something else anyway. And then I'm probably going to go grab the leftover pizza because I wanted it. So I think you have to feed your cravings, whatever they are. And some some days they will be healthy and some days they won't be. And that'll take away the binging if you're doing those two things. One is not depriving yourself. And two, if you're dealing with your feelings and you're facing them, you're making choices from them, you're understanding yourself, what makes you comfortable, what doesn't, because when you're in an uncomfortable situation or facing it, that is a binge waiting to happen. Do you believe in dieting or do you believe in just being careful no. what you put in your mouth? No. I, I think dieting is the way to gain weight. Yeah, I mean, the other day I was at the gym and somebody approached me and he said, Deborah. The best thing is, I forgot this, This really, there's this craze about, I forgot the name of the book already, 
something plant-based. Um, do you know the one I'm talking about? Oh, the paleo? paleo, paleo, paleo yeah, and I know people called? swear paleo? by it. And they're like, you know, this is it. And it probably is. But that's tough to sustain, too, isn't it? It's it for a while. I mean, diets can get you to lose weight. Right. But then, but then you gain it back because it's not the realistic... It, 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 you can't expect yourself to stay that way. I think that the only diet that works is the diet of your cravings. And I, I, I really stand by that because every time that you eat something that you are not in the mood for, first of all, it's a bad message to yourself. You're telling yourself that you can't make a decision about what you want, that some, someone else is supposed to tell you what to eat. Yeah. That's just bull. You, you are an adult. You have the information. And if you want to have something that is off of that plan, you're wrong to have it. You're bad. That's craziness. It is. We are giving ourselves horrible messages. We're not trusting ourselves. We're trusting someone else with our cravings. That, that is what leads to our voice. The first step is listening to your cravings and deciding what you're going to eat and make and negotiating. And, okay. What I'm does that mean? Just in the mood. What, it what means mean? that Let's go to the I'm pizza. not in the mood. Let's go to the but pizza. For example, for okay. Ne- negotiating means. Oh, did you say pizza? Yeah, let's go to the pizza. How do you negotiate okay. that pizza? So I'm going to order pizza tonight, or there's a party, and I really I don't want to have salad. I want to have salad, and I want to have a great big piece of deep dish pizza. Oh, so heaven. I'm going to have eggs for breakfast, something light. I'm going to have a light, a lighter lunch. I'm not going to have carbs during the day. I'm going to have salad and vegetables and turkey and stuff like that. I'm going to make sure that I have a snack in the afternoon so that I'm not starving when I go to that pizza. I'm going to have salad with it so that I'm not only filling up on the pizza. And then I am having myself a big, big piece of pizza. And then I am done (laughs) for the day. That is, now let's say I, let's say I'm avoiding the pizza. I'm depriving myself. So I'm going to try to satisfy myself all day. I'm going to go to that party. I'm going to have a salad. Well, I'm either going to start picking at the crust or picking at things and picking at desserts. And then since I've already blown my diet, I'm going to just go to town and have everything. I may come home and go to the cabinets. I've probably had another thousand calories at least more than I would have had had I had just a pizza. Look, it comes down to willpower. What do you suggest to people who struggle with the whole willpower thing? I mean, again, you've forget gone through third. Pardon me? Will, forget willpower. Willpower has no mm. place with food. Willpower is about sticking to the idea that you can choose what you want to eat. You are a responsible, smart woman, and you can eat and you can figure out what you want to have. And if you, the willpower is about sticking to what is right for you, not just with food, but with all the decisions that you make during the day. If you get a phone call and someone wants to have lunch with you and all of a sudden you're thinking about what you're going to eat, that, that probably is telling you that you don't want to have lunch with that person. Oh. Start listening. Start listening to food. It's, trying to, it's a tap on the shoulder. It's telling you something. That's a good point. If you're already thinking about it, forget going to lunch with that person. Cancel the plans. That's actually right. like, you yeah, heard, you that's, heard, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm interrupting you. I need to stop. You've ri- <laughs> no, it's fine. You've <laughs> written about this as well, right? Tell us about that. I wrote about it, did you say? Yes. Yes. The first book I wrote is called It Was Food Versus Me, and I won. And that is a memoir. It's kind of a girlfriendy, you know, we're sitting in our, in our jammies, you know, just talking on the sofa. And that's just a kind of a personal what I went through, how I got out of it. Um, I call myself, you know, I said, do you want to listen to a professional or, you know, somebody who studies rats with a white coat, you know, looks at rats and their behaviors, or do you want to talk to the rat? Because I'm the rat. I, I ran the maze. I ate the pellets. I know how I got out. So I think I can be trusted because I've gone through it and I still go through it. I'm not perfect with this. And I, I don't ask myself to be. That's the other thing. Tell us more about... We're never going to be perfect at it. None of us ever will. None of us are perfect at anything. But tell us more about what else you've written about this that people can also pick up and, you know, have a quick read. So the... So because when I wrote it was Food Versus Me and I won, there was a stigma. I decided, and the book didn't do as well as as, um, as Viking Ed hoped. I ended up writing a romantic comedy, and I put the food messages in the subplot. So that 
is called Surprise Me. That is the novel, and that's what I made the movie off of. And my dream always was to, you know, hope that somebody would pick up the book and make a movie out of it, and that just wasn't happening. <laughs> so, so how did you get I, to making a movie out of the book that you wrote? You wrote the, the film, you directed the film, you produced the film. It's not like you're a girl out of Hollywood. How did you do that? No. You know, it was kind of a an, an, an organic thing because I... I didn't think I could write a screenplay. I didn't know how to. And someone said, oh, someone who had read the book said, and he was in the in the film business or trying to get in the film business, actually. He said, he ended up being my co-producer. He said, you, you can write a screenplay. Just, you know, download. There's an application to download. It sets up the tabs. And so I thought, oh, I'll try that. So I did it. Wow. And I did it quickly. And then I there was a pitch contest in L.A. And I was told I was premature to pitch by this entertainment attorney. But... He thought I should go and try to talk to the people in the panel. So I went out there, and, and then I realized I'm not going to get to talk to these people unless I pitch. So I asked if I could, you know, if I could enter the contest. And some people had trailers. All I had was, was a screenplay. And so wow. I ended up going up there and pitching for the five minutes, and it was like that hot, sweaty, oh, my God, I just made such an ass of myself. I was just so embarrassed. And I ended up winning first place. Wow. So Wait, what was this, what was this for? You, you pitched for whom? It was a panel of people who had produced movies, marketed movies. Um, there was a distributor. There was a wow. casting director. How'd you get so, into that? Wait a minute. How'd you get into that? I know people in the business who can't even get to pitch their stuff. How'd you do that? So this, is a sem- this was a seminar uh, and it's, it was called How to Pitch Your Movie, How to wow. Pitch Your Screenplay or How to Pitch Your Movie. And it was a panel, and you pay to get into the seminar. And then you pitch, and then there's a winner, and the winner gets some cash and, and gets the services of the people on the panel or, or gets consulting from the wow. people on the panel. So, so things like that kind of kept happening. And then I would walk away from certain people who I could tell were trying to scam me and or just, you know, get money from me or whatever, and... That's another place that the food lessons taught me because I really did have to learn to listen to my gut. And, and, and um, you know, I will tell you that a binge to me today is more of letting myself feel really bad. It, like instead of trying to talk myself out of my feelings or instead of distracting myself with some sort of an activity or food or something, sometimes I just really force myself to dive into a bad feeling and stay there for a little while and like feel sorry for myself and grieve it and cry. And I, there's a part of the movie that says, um, you know, to the skinny girl, the, the main character says, how do you, don't you ever want to, like, what do you do when you get hurt? You know, how come you don't go to food? And she said, I, I, I dive in, you know, it's like emotional detox. And I, and I think I feel and look better afterwards because after a good sob, you know, it gets it all out. Wow. Do we have a clip? Do we have a clip from the movie? Hang on. Let's go to the movie. And the, f- the film is Surprise Me. That's about to uh, debut at the Downtown L.A. Film Festival October 17th. Let's go to a quick, quick clip. Where are you? Okay, stop being so paranoid. We are fine. We better be. Because if your little plan goes south, we're at Costco eating crow in bulk. Mr. and Mrs. Finch, ready for the view of a lifetime? Oh my god, Danny, does everything have to be about sex with you? Does nothing get to be about sex with you? I want to feel close with somebody to have it. I let you order food I don't even like. What's closer than that? It's overpaid, don't you think? Artificial sweetener only works in my coffee. How is Danny? <laughs> I have never understood why the two of you are not a couple. Mom, please stop. I'm not attracted to Danny that way, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeannie Burns. Surprise. I'm almost finished here. Do you want to take a detour? Wow. Nancy, this is good stuff. Did you <laughs> edit Thank it? You. In, where, where are you from? Where are you, where are you calling me from? Chicago. Chicago. Uh-huh. Did you do everything there? Pre-production, post-production? Did you shoot it? I mean, this everything, is... everything. There was parts of it done in my, you know, in my, 
in my house, in my ex-husband's house, um, in my folks' house. and That trailer um, is and great. I'm all telling over the you. City. If I were sitting at the theater and that trailer popped up, I would absolutely, positively, 100% go see it. Oh, so, thank you. Thank no, you I'm so telling much. You, and I come from the land of Los Angeles where I'm attending these things all the time. Who did the trailer? I mean, did you put that together too? No, that was a, um, I hired um, a woman in New York uh, who did the trailer. And didn't she do the best job? I love yes. that trailer so much. Yes, that's a terrific film. But it's also so beautifully shot. So you've never done a film before. What's your background? What have you done? Um, you know, ate like lots of cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> no, but also, I mean, in terms of a job, you were in advertising. <laughs> that was sales. my experience. No, I'm kidding. That, that was my experience. I mean, I, 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 I was a stay-at-home mom. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, 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 w I write. I mean, I love to write, but, but I never thought this movie would be a, a movie. I, I, I sometimes can't believe that it, that it did, but it just goes to show you that all the years that I was obsessing about food and that there was, there were, there were past passions and, and, and there was creativity behind that, that I didn't even know I had, you know, because I was, what a prison I was in of my own obsessions of, of food. And, and so I, I think sometimes when you go to the, the painful or the things that you are passionate about, you're so surprised by what, by what comes out of you. And it's, I, I guess that's what I want to say to women is that we often think that there's something wrong with us because of all this, you know, the 37 squirrels that run around our brain. But there's a lot of creativity and, and energy and, and, and smarts in there that, that we don't understand until we try, try something, you Look, know? I mean, you, I, you I, said I had you were, no idea this was going to work. Yeah, you said you were sitting at home, stay-at-home mom, three kids, eating the cinnamon toast crunch. I have to tell you. <laughs> no, but really, when you're at your lowest point in life, and I've had a few of those lately in the past couple of years, now, uh -huh. now I'm saying to myself, okay, what's the lesson I'm trying to be, what, what's the lesson I'm trying to learn here? Sometimes it just takes time and you realize, okay, this tough time is happening because I've got to use this to get to the next point. And I've always right. come to realize that without the tough time, there is no next point. Does that make sense? Like everybody's got to go through it and get to the other side or I don't know, there may not be another side. Then life is just flat. We do. Do you know what I mean? And I, I think we also have to just accept and embrace pain and know that we're supposed to have pain you know we are a society who just we don't want to be uncomfortable we don't want to be bored we don't want to be too cold we don't want to be too hot we we don't want to be um anything there, there's a there's a medicine or a drink or a food or a something that's going to keep us feeling happy and and I don't think we're supposed to be happy all the time i, I think that's the problem is that we have this expectation and I don't think that's the human condition. I think the human condition is that we're everything. Sometimes we're really happy and joyful, and other times we feel like crap and we hate our lives. I mean, I just think that's honest, no matter what your life is. And embrace it even if you're at the bottom of it. And I get it, because when you're at the bottom of something, you're like, oh, my God, how will I ever dig my way out of this? But yeah. you will and if I, you just believe I in it. I call it hole diving. Like, I go into that hole, and I've... I've gone into it enough that I know I'll get out at some point, but it's that feeling where, you know, life, <laughs> I'm quoting the movie again, but life is bad, bad, bad. It's never going to get better. And, you know, there's nothing, nothing to change it or turn around. And that's when she says, I dive in. Like, I think the more that you feel that, you, you, you get it out. You get it out. And then you do start to feel really strong. And then you're not scared of the feelings. You're not scared of depression and i i do think that we all will have depression to, to to some degree if it starts to feel dangerous and you have to get help but i i get depressed how i, I Hell mean yeah you know so but i don't but i know that that's okay i just i just learned to sit with it i just learned to sit with it and be i i've learned to be uncomfortable and, and that hopefully, is why I don't eat as much. Right. And hopefully without a large dish of ice cream in your hand and then a second bowl and a third bowl. Be good to yourself. Try not to do the binge. But um, they, people can pick up your books, right? Are they still out uh -huh. there? They're e-books, aren't they? Tell us the titles again. Um, it was Food Versus Me and I Won and Surprise Me. And both those are available in um, hard copy and, you know, on, online and, and e-books. Okay, wonderful. And you're coming back out to L.A. for the uh, 
October 17th screening. I'm so sorry I'm not going to be here for that. I really, really... I know, me too. No, but I'm sure I'll, to have yeah, and I'm sure I'll see it, but I, I just want to meet you. So on your way next time back to L.A., because I'm sure you're going to be, this is going to be up for plenty of awards, um, maybe we'll go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. We'll go and eat something really yummy. Yeah, something yummy. And we and won't feel fun. bad about it. Right, and we'll, we'll enjoy going. And then when we feel good going, we'll say, oh, this is meant to be. So um, how can exactly. people get in touch with you? If you said you're an emotional eating coach. How can they get in touch with you? Um, you know what? My email is nancygoodman100 at gmail.com, and I am happy to hear from anybody. Do you and do I coaching? Do, uh, like I online do co- coaching. Online coaching and whatnot? Um, usually by phone. Yeah, I can do online I mean. too, but usually by phone. Okay, so you're available for that. There's two books that people can pick up that you've done. And there's the film that's going to be coming out, Surprise Me. And uh, where can people see that? Is it, where is it going to be released? Well, you know, we have foreign distribution. We It has not landed domestically yet, so I'm hoping in the next month I'll be able to tell you where, where it lands. But, you know, it'll be on some sort of a VOD um, platform. Oh, yeah. Would you let us know, too, so we can tell our viewers and our listeners? That'd yes. be great. Yes, I would be happy to. Well, lots of congratulations to you. You've been a great guest. I've really, really enjoyed talking to you. And just Oh, thank you so much. I love talking to you, too. Yeah, everybody. Uh, Nancy Goodman, the writer, director, producer of Surprise Me. Um, congratulations. That's going to be um, here in at the Downtown L.A. Film Festival, October 17th. Oh, oh, before I let you go, we were talking about Thanksgiving. Remember yes. about binge eating and Thanksgiving, yes. how everybody is stuffed. They've got to undo their pants and their, you know, shirt buttons are popping open. You had a little suggestion for that, didn't you? I do. Okay, so here's what I want all my little friends out there to do on Thanksgiving morning. Yeah. Um, first, you got to think about all the things that are not right as you face the day. Um, we all have, you know, it, 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 we, could, we could assume that either – there's someone that's not going to be at the Thanksgiving dinner that we wish was, or maybe somebody's there that we wish wasn't. Um, all the things that are not perfect in our lives come, come home for the holidays, right? And so it just it causes us emotional stress often. And so the idea of Thanksgiving morning is to think about it all, Think about everybody who's going to be at that dinner and everybody who's not and where you're going to be and what, what would be perfect for you and what, what makes it not perfect. Think about it, feel bad about it, and then make a plan to go against that a little bit. Like, for example, figure out who it is that you're going to talk to that night or how, maybe you're going to play a game. Maybe you're going to bring something to the Thanksgiving dinner. You are going to take responsibility for making it a really wonderful Thanksgiving, and you're going to think about that and strategize and plan it. Not food. The food will be there, but something else that you can go to after the food. And then after you feel so bad about whatever it is that you have a right to feel bad about, you have a right to those feelings, then you think about what you're so thankful for and everything that is there and everything that makes you so fortunate and lucky and grateful. The stuffing? And it might make you cry, but you're getting out all of the emotions before the meal. And then eat, make sure you eat mm. on Thanksgiving during the day. Don't go into the meal starving. And then take a nice big plate of everything and have dessert and then have a toothbrush with you after your helpings and you're not stuffed, you're maybe full and comfortable, but that stuff, go brush your teeth. You're done. Participate in the evening. Okay. Wise words for Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> and if I have an extra spoonful of stuffing, I guess it's okay, right? Don't be so hard. It's so okay. Enjoy the food. Do not try to I not love eat stuffing. it. Eat it. Just love stuffing. Yeah. Love, love, love. Everybody's stuffing. And then go light the next day. Just go light, go light the next day. Yep. Nancy Goodman, okay. thank you so much again, everybody. The Downtown LA Film Festival, October 17th. Your film, Surprise Me, and then hopefully it's going to be distributed uh, throughout the U.S., and we'll learn about that a little later on when she finds out. Thank you so much for being here, and everybody, thank thanks you, for, yeah, thanks for tuning in to Deborah Cobelt Live. See you next time.